Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another LEGO Marvel Spider-Man Far From Home set review. This time we're covering the Molten Man battle. And the setup for this one is 76128. The recommended ages are 7 and up and an SPS count of 294 while the price point is $29.99. And oh man, I absolutely love this set. Molten Man, I mean this build is just godly. And I want to make sure I talk about this set and hopefully the Stark Jet before Avengers Endgame and you know, before like we all die tomorrow. So uh, that's that should be good, but if you want to consider supporting the channel while uh, picking this set up for yourself, you can definitely consider checking out my Amazon affiliate link, which is always uh, down below for each review. So, uh, yeah. First up, the new Spider-Man stealth suit included with this set. The exclusive minifigure here is really good, man. This is just fantastic. I mean, yes, it is in a primary color of dark gray when the actual suit in the movie is more of a black, but I mean, I imagine that's due to whatever concept art Lego was basing this off of. Either way, taking one good look at the design on the mask here, I mean, how the detail in, in on the lenses, in between the lenses, the, the lines outside uh, the lenses, you know, all the different texturing uh, as it continues onto the back here with more of those lines and the strap and the buckle there just looking really really good and the torso design just looking so so awesome as well it doesn't have the shield emblem which is kind of unfortunate but that's okay who cares um you can see the belt on the uh lower half of the torso here looking really great all of this detail is awesome and you even have leg printing which is really great because how many times has lego skipped out on leg printing for minifigures that desperately needed it in recent memory i mean this is really awesome lego could have just as easily skipped down and gone with either just gray or just like straight up black legs but they actually went the extra mile and did this leg printing and the design is awesome it looks incredible this minifigure is incredible and real quick I want to give you a look at what the minifigure could look like if you put on your own black arms and as you can see just making the simple change of inverting the color of the arms changing the arms to black and the hands to gray I mean you really can't be too bothered by the primary use of dark gray this minifigure really does get you pretty damn close to how he really uh, will wind up looking in the movie especially if you make this simple change these arms and hands are not actually included with this set um, but again I just wanted to show you really quick and I think that uh, this is how I'll personally be keeping the minifigure this is really really great next up Mysterio the one recurring minifigure across all three Spider-Man Far From Home sets which is again super generous on Lego's part this minifigure is really really amazing I mean every time it, it's it's like it has the most minor inaccuracies with the design work on the torso and legs and it really doesn't even matter I mean this just looks so great, especially with the brand new dome, the brand new fishbowl piece, which is a much more tighter, thicker, more compact dome than you would have seen with like the, the, the you know, the two uh, half like uh, Sandy Cheeks dome from the SpongeBob sets all those years ago. This is the perfect Mysterio dome piece, and it really does not get much better than this. And I really appreciate Lego making this. Also with the chrome head underneath that really maintains that clouded look that you want Mysterio to have underneath the dome. Because obviously when you put this on a minifigure head, it tends to magnify the head and it looks pretty ridiculous so you don't want to do that which is why lego included the chrome head underneath the dome and also um again you do have these the uh, power blast pieces so you go ahead and uh, just uh, push against the arm and the power blast pieces go flying kind of like that didn't really work out but you get the idea so we'll go ahead and remove the second one temporarily uh, so we can talk about uh, the rest of the minifigure in terms of the magenta cape which is really great uh, to top off the minifigure of course iconic to mysterio's look and then also the design work on the back of the torso just uh, consistent with the front looking absolutely fantastic this minifigure is really really damn near perfect I, I, I'm still just really again th this is the best MCU wave that I think we've had in a long time and these minifigures are definitely a testament to that finally though we have the firefighter and I, I totally understand what a lot of people you know are kind of upset about with this minifigure is inclusion when this very easily could have been our Ned Leeds this very easily could have been um what the hell is the dude's name, the bully? Flash. Very easily could have been Flash. But I mean, you know, look, man, this is clearly the savior of the universe, the one who will reverse time and stop Thanos once and for all tomorrow in Avengers Endgame. This is your guy. So how could Lego not include him? I mean, he doesn't have a new torso or a new set of legs. Apparently these appear in Lego City and like some other sets, but I mean, the design work is still fantastic with that vest, with that flashlight, the belt. I mean, this has got to be the most realistic looking firefighter that I've personally ever been able to add to my collection that only continues on the back there with the 
walkie-talkie and just more of the accessories printed onto that belt and just really, really good stuff. This head, which has been rehashed countless times, which is a shame for our savior of the universe here, but we do also have a flintlock pistol fire extinguisher. So again, this dude's not messing around. And if you pull from the extra pieces pile um, that is included with this set, you do actually get two of these pistols. So again, not messing around. This dude is going to stop Molten Man real quick and then travel back to the past to save the future. Okay, so I'm not going to lie, I've been shooting this early in the morning, so you excuse any birds or, or any uh, construction you might hear outside. They're like tearing the road up where I live. But, of course, before we discuss this incredible Molten Man build, we do have to talk about all the webs that are included. Yet again, you get the full variety of web pieces, as we can now come to expect uh, for Spider-Man sets, and with uh, you know, as is the case with all these Spider-Man Far From Home sets. And what's really cool, though, is in this particular one, and I think in all three of the Spider-Man Far From Home sets, they give you the incentive to actually, um, you know, put these webs together in a specific way instead of just you know um, taking the webs as they come. You know, Legos actually in these sets, in the instructions, having you put, uh, you know, a series and a set of these web pieces together in such a way that they actually just look really cool. And you like, in this case, you assemble this really amazing looking, you know, like web mass, web blast. I mean, it just looks really cool. Obviously the minifigure can't support that and just, you know, is going to fall over. So you have to put them on a brick or something. Um, but it's just really awesome, man. Cause I know I certainly don't ha and, like, haven't taken the time to uh, connect the webs in such a way like this. So I appreciate them just kind of throwing that in the, in the instructions and uh, making sure um, these, these web pieces are used to their fullest potential. And so, yeah, you get those, the web cuffs, and pretty much all the web pieces you would come to expect. Um, but just setting those aside for a minute so we can finally discuss Molten Man. Oh my God. If you ask me, Molten Man is a lot more exciting than the minifigures. I mean, holy crap. I, listen, like seeing this in the pictures was one thing. Having it in person is another. This is so much better than I was expecting. I mean, to me, this is the creativity and the inventiveness that has been sorely lacking in so many MCU sets for so many years now, because not only has Lego put together an incredible looking build, I mean, but they've also, again, seamlessly integrated the features into it and all the functionality, all of the articulation, but the attention to detail in making this really look believable as Molten Man with all these trans orange elements and all these trans orange elements that have gold printing on them and, and the, the dripping of the lava with these trans orange antennas and these trans orange uh, chains that hang down and, and these little stickers that simulate like molten cracks within the build. All these different accessories sticking in by use of a few hinges and ball joints. This is just perfect. I don't think... Lego could have done better. This is just phenomenal in every sense of the word. And I mean, honestly, could go down as my favorite build among all the Spider-Man Far From Home sets because this is just so amazing and so to get started uh first we'll begin with the articulation so first off with the head uh as you can see you have a ball joint here um and you can even rotate the head itself like a full 360 like the main faceplate, which is pretty crazy and something i wasn't expecting so there is that um and again yeah you can move the uh, head around on that ball joint there um so super poseable with just the head alone and then these uh shoulder plates up here as you can see are also linked in um by a couple ball joints and so those uh can be you know bent up and rotated full 360 and can be positioned uh, however which way you want. And again, that does go for both of them. I mean, one small nitpicky thing that I really shouldn't even mention is that you do want to keep Molten Man standing up straight or else, you know, he is uh, pretty front heavy, so he will fall over. Um, but as you can see, you do have the uh, articulated uh, leg, uh, shoulders here, which is really cool on the left side. And those are just, again, more ball joints. You got ball jointed elbows, so full range of, uh, of uh, posability there. Um, and again, you're going to want to keep him standing straight up. Do, don't do it. Don't do it like me. Um, and then you have, again, ball joints. Uh, you know, his arm is also ball jointed at the shoulders and the elbows. Um, there's no like actual like wrist articulation because his wrists are either, you know, this giant hand or this giant uh, cannon, which we'll cover in just a moment. But you do have articulation with each one of the fingers, each one of the four fingers that are clipped in. And those look really cool. The combination of gold and orange elements. And uh, if we continue down, though, to the thigh area, you can see we do have mo more ball joints for uh, both thighs and then kind of like both knees as well. So, I mean, the articulation is 
is the complete package. I mean, Lego didn't skip out. This is not the War Machine Buster where there's no articulated elbows or anything stupid like that. This is the full package in terms of articulation. And to really discuss a bit more of the detail with the faceplate, we'll just go ahead and remove this for a quick second to just give you a really nice, solid look at this piece. I mean, you take one look at that printed design and it is just excellent. I mean, good God, look at that. This is amazing. I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, that design is perfect and it's printed on perfectly. Just, I mean, a huge shout out to Lego for really going the extra mile with this whole build, man. And that's just connected, as you can see, onto that ball jointed plate. Um, and you have a sticker on the slope right above that. And if I can actually get it connected there, you can see what I'm talking about here. Um, you have two stickers that simulate, you know, the lava cracking underneath. And I mean, the idea is that Molten Man is, a, is kind of like also absorbing everything around him, right? So he's kind of made up of like pavement he's made up of all these different things that he's absorbing around him on the street and so you also do have all these accessories clipped in to really sell you on the idea that he's absorbing things around him and so essentially up here on the top left corner you do have a street sign clipped in which does have obviously uh the street light um you know right there next to it as part of it and it's just what a really cool looking simple design that just adds so much and you do have one of the uh, trans orange gold chains actually connected to that street sign and that just looks amazing and can be removed you can pull that off and you know give it to spider-man for instance if you wanted to all these different accessories that absorbing i almost said absorbing man that molten man has can be removed and you can like again gift them to one of the uh one of the main minifigures and you know use them for play you know use them for whatever you want i mean this is just so customizable with each one of these accessories that it's just really phenomenal and of course they can be easily clipped right back in Again, the uh, dripping effect using the trans orange antennas is just amazing and just a really great cherry on top for all of this. You have these giant beams that are attached in by use of a couple ball joints uh, here and here on the back. And those actually have a one by six sticker for some added detail as well with some bolts and different scuff marks. I mean, just really, really fantastic stuff here. And as we continue on to the back here over on the left arm, we do have another street sign here with a sticker there. And that looks really great. Um, again, attached in by use of a basic clip, so you can also remove this one. And I mean, you don't even have to remove them. Like, they also simulate on the box, for instance. You can go ahead, and if I can actually get Molten Man to stand up here, uh, you can go ahead and take, like, Mysterio, for instance, and we'll go ahead and remove the Power Blast pieces. Again, if you don't know how Power Blast pieces work, the ones that are included with Mysterio, you just go ahead and fire... Well, it's supposed to work better than that, but you get the idea. Um, but I mean, on, on the actual, like, uh, set box, for instance, you know, the idea is you take Mysterio and he's actually supposed to, like, grip on uh, to one of these uh, different accessories. In this case, I got him gripping on to the actual light post, which also sticks out right there. Um, and so, that, I mean, that, that works really well. And you can, of course, do that with any one of these accessories. And so it's just so, so awesome, man. And you might have noticed that I accidentally just fired one of the studs uh, from the main cannon. So we'll go ahead and get Molten Man back into a somewhat reasonable position here so that we can actually fire uh, his main arm cannon. And again, just all these accessories that really sell you on the idea that he's like melting and absorbing uh, things around him. You've got like a tire here that makes up the uh, his, his wrist cannon on his left arm. I mean, dude. So we'll just go ahead and move Mysterio down a little bit. And basically you can rotate it whichever way you want. And then it fires and it's great. You've probably seen this piece before. And so far uh, I lost pretty much all except for I think two of those studs. No, actually, I only lost. I lost half of them. Okay, half of those are gone forever. Uh, the other half remained on the studio. But man, if we just go ahead and uh, keep going here with uh, the rest of Molten Man, if I can get him to stand up. Usually, I mean, when you just actually got him into a decent position, he stays just fine. It's just my dumbass can't uh, seem to maintain it as I'm talking about it. Um, but again, I just really want to emphasize that any one of these accessories can be clipped onto by a minifigure. This street light these beams i mean you've got a stud on the end of each one if we go ahead and take like spider-man for instance you can go ahead and uh, get him on there and what's really great too is if you of course if you actually attach the minifigures to any one of these accessories you can then give spider-man uh the web without risking him you know falling over as i as i say that molten man literally collapses okay uh, it, without him falling over if you get molten man into a reasonable position first um which i think is so so fantastic man this entire build is amazing and one last thing that i do want to cover of course is that you even have a car hood, like the front of a car hood sticking out of uh, his right side, like his, the, the right side of his lower abdomen. I mean, good God, this is just incredible. I mean, 
I don't know what else to say. I, I hope I've kind of given you a really nice, solid look at the whole thing because this has to be one of my favorite builds I've seen LEGO produce for the Marvel Cinematic Universe ever. I mean, period. Hats off to LEGO for this one. I mean, hats off to their inclusion of the firefighter who will save the universe and defeat Thanos. This is just the perfect set for $30, and I cannot recommend this one enough. If you are looking forward to Spider-Man Far From Home, make sure you pick this one up. And with all that said, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the box and the instruction manual and wrap up this video. So the box is definitely quite a box, as you can see, taking place somewhere in Europe, probably, I don't know, but it's a really great graphic with Mysterio and obviously Spidey in the stealth suit and all that stuff, a really awesome image. And then we have the Spidey emblem down there in the bottom right corner along with that new render of the uh, new Spider-Man Far From Home suit as well in the upper right. The stealth suit sporting the actual size reference on the top and then all the features that I just showed you with another really cool graphic really displaying, you know, the functionality and just all the different you know, areas where minifigures can grip onto and just, man, the set is so great. You just saw it. Um, but yeah, the instruction manual consisting of paper comes in at a whopping, uh, a, a total of, of, uh, uh, 71 pages, 71 pages for this molten man build. And then, uh, you have an advertisement for the entire Spider-Man far from home line. Again, just an incredibly solid wave. I mean, my God, all these sets, despite the Stark Jet being pretty overpriced, are all really fantastic. Is that it? Oh yeah, and you have an advertisement for this. Does anybody actually play this? Did anybody care? I certainly didn't. You don't want any part of this. Hey kid, Mr. Stark, what's going- No time. Listen, we're from the not too distant past, an alternate timeline where Thanos succeeded and erased half of all life, but we found the solution. It's you. You are the key to everything. Me? No, not you, him. You are the one who will stop Thanos and save the future. But we need you to come with us. Now. All right, guys, there you go. That's it for the review on the Molten Man battle. Thank you so much for sticking around for the whole thing. Hopefully this review was okay. I've definitely tried to kind of rush this one out. Uh, so I really appreciate you bearing with me. But if you did enjoy the review, maybe I helped you in deciding as whether or not you plan on picking up this set for yourself. Be sure to let me know, man, by dropping this video a comment below as I'd love to hear from you. And again, uh, if you want to consider supporting the channel, you can totally check out my Amazon affiliate. <laughs> Amazon affiliate link where I've got all the sets there. Um, but yeah, man. Otherwise, if you also want to consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see all my new upcoming Avengers Endgame minifigures first, that is always linked down below where I post all the progress photos for every new minifigure that I make. And then preview photos do go up, of course, over on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook long before any of it makes it to the channel here. And Avengers Endgame is tomorrow, the culmination of the entire MCU up until this point since Iron Man in 2008. The end of the Infinity Saga, closing this chapter on our lives, the grand finale of the MCU. I am not ready. I, I really cannot believe this is happening. Um, we'll talk more about it, I guess, at the end of the Stark Jet review, which I'm hoping I will have up uh, tomorrow before going to see it. But I'm seeing Avengers Endgame twice in a row tomorrow, once at 6.30 in 3D, unfortunately, and then 10 p.m. straight after. So it's going to be nuts. And uh, yeah, that's it for this review. Thanks again. All right. Take care, guys. Then over this one is seven and up. Nope, those are the ages. Okay, off to a great start. Back to another Lego Marvel.